Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. This video is packed with tons of Dollar Tree crafts you are going to love. We're gonna start with this piece of board. This is part of one of those like wooden boards that you can find at Dollar Tree. These are their larger ones. I used it for a, a previous project, but today I'm just gonna use the remaining piece. I'm gonna cover the little holes using some wood filler, and then I'm going to sand it down once it's dry. This is just gonna cover them up. I'm also going to sand down the edges because it's a little splintery from when I cut it. And then I'm going to give it one pretty heavy coat of Waverly Chalk Paint and the white, and we're gonna let it fully dry. As that dries, I'm going to take this windmill welcome stake. It's from Dollar Tree, all the way from the summertime. I had it left over in my stash. I'm gonna remove the bottom portion and just keep the little windmill part. The little middle portion I'm going to remove because it has a little sticking part in the back. And then I'm just gonna attach it with some permanent glue and hot glue. That way it's gonna be a little bit more flat on the back. I'm also going to give it a fresh coat of black paint. I do like the distressed look it has, but I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna give it one coat of the Waverly Chalk Paint in the ink, and we're gonna do all over it. I got you, and you got me too. You can ride out of the blue. And while that dries, I'm gonna do a stitch look on the board. I'm just gonna use a permanent marker with a thin tip, and I'm gonna use my ruler just to keep me nice and straight. And we're just gonna do dash lines. This is gonna give it the illusion of a stitch look, which I really love that look. And I'm going to do it in all four sides. And now I am going to bring in the first set of stickers. These are beautiful. They have a very farmhouse look. They look like little mini farmhouse signs. And they're just so adorable. They come all these set in one pack. And I'm going to use this little longer one. And I'm just going to place it on the right side of the board. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to press it down. And then I'm going to take the windmill. And I'm just going to place it where I want it. So that it looks pleasing to the whole design. Then I'm just gonna press down and kind of mark where I need to make a hole. There's still a little part that is lifted on the back. So I'm gonna use my drill to drill a hole and then we can place the windmill right through it, attaching it with hot glue and permanent glue as well. I wanted to add more texture and color to this design. So I wanted to add these leafy greens. These are just left over from another pick and I'm gonna hot glue it right onto the top. And once I had it where I wanted it, I think it turned out so adorable. You're going to have to let me know what you think of this one. I placed it first because it's one of my favorites. But let me know what you think. Look how beautiful it looks. It's fresh. It's beautiful. I love the little sticker, how it looks like a cute little farmhouse sign. For the next Dollar Tree hack, I'm going to start with this farmhouse truck. They have them in their crafting section. They have all kinds of wooden shapes. And I found this one recently and I grabbed a couple. I'm going to give the entire thing, except for the rails on top, two coats of Waverly Chalk Paint in the white. Once that was dry, I'm going to use that Waverly Antiquing Wax just to stain the rail, just to look a little bit more like wood and a little darker. And I'm just going to do one coat and wipe any excess. Here's the stickers that we're going to use on this one. Oh, these are so vintage looking. I love them. They, again, they come several in a set and they're just kind of 3D also, just like the previous one. So beautiful. I'm just going to try to measure just to see which one I think will look best. I ended up going with that one. It just was a little longer. The wood tone matched the darker wood tone from the rails. So we're just going to place it right there on where the door would be. We're going to press it down. It has a little sticker on the back and it actually adheres pretty well. I'm going to use more of the Waverly white paint and we're just going to dab a little bit on the rail just to look like if it has no fallen on it. And we're going to do the same on the sticker just to make it look like snow just fell on the truck. I'm going to draw what the wheel or the tire would be like because I do want to paint them black and I'm going to use Waverly chalk paint in the ink. Once everything was dry, I'm going to add some greenery to the bed of the truck. These are just some picks that I get on Amazon and I do have on my Amazon store, which is always linked down below. I always add all my favorite items. So if I ever say I got this on Amazon, chances are it is on my Amazon store. So check it out. It is linked below. I removed the bottom portion of the picks and then I'm just going to hot glue them at an angle to the back of the truck. This is just going to give it the illusion that these pine evergreens are on the bed of the truck. 
and I think it turned out cute. Hot glue was sufficient. You can always staple them, but hot glue worked really well. I'm going to use a couple, actually four, of these little wooden blocks from Dollar Tree. Just going to hot glue two behind each wheel on the bottom. This is going to help the entire design stay forward, you know, stay upright when I use on my console table. I'm going to paint them white just to kind of make sure that it doesn't look so unfinished. And then I am going to antique the edges. I wasn't going to do that, but I felt like it needed a little bit of dimension, a little bit of distress on those edges because it's such a farmhouse truck. So I'm going to use a makeup sponge and some more of the antiquing wax. And I'm just going to do it lightly here and there. And I think this truck turned out so adorable. It's still up on my console table. It's perfect addition to winter decor. I love it. This next Dollar Tree hack is so easy, but I wanted to include it because it's so darn cute. All right, so this little jar is glass. I got it at Target Dollar Spot. It came in a set of three, and this is the rounder one. This glittery ribbon is gorgeous. I found it at Hobby Lobby. I used it for a wedding bouquet that I made recently. I'm just going to cut off a piece of it that is just the same width as the neck portion of the vase. Once I had it cut, now I'm just going to kind of measure around and then cut the excess and we're just gonna hot glue it in place. Once I had the ribbon attached, doesn't it look absolutely stunning already? Like it could be left like this and be so cute. But I found these stickers at Dollar Tree. They had a round look. They all had like a wreath look and they kind of had farmhouse slash kind of glam. It had a little sheen to it. So I'm going to add one that I think is going to look really good. I'm just going to add it right to the front. It stuck really well to the glass too. I wasn't sure if it was going to stick, but it did. So I just placed it what I want to be the front and that's it. Then I'm going to add some cute little flowers that I had on hand. I'm just going to cut off some of the excess stem. I thought the pink color would kind of complement well the sticker. So again, I'm just going to cut off the excess stem and leave just enough where the flower can tilt over. And I think this one turned out so adorable. Look at this little jar. Imagine if you made three of these maybe in different heights or use several of these as a centerpiece. Love it. For the next Dollar Tree hack, I'm going to take this Believe Gnome sign that was left over from my Christmas stash. I'm going to remove the jute string and then I'm going to use my palm sander to sand down the surface to remove any glitter that it had and also to scuff off the surface because it will allow the paint to stick a little better. I'm going to dust it really well and clean it and then we're going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the country gray. Hey, Once it was dry, it's time to bring in this beautiful stencil that I got online. It says blessed and it has a little bit of a tilt, which I actually like. It gives it a little bit of a character. I'm going to tape it down with some masking tape to keep it in place. I'm going to use a stencil brush from Essential Stencil as well as Waverly Chalk Paint in the ink. And we're just going to start stenciling. The way I do it, I add very little paint and I start just dabbing on the stenciling in a upward and downward motion. And then I'm just going to remove it. I remove it while it's still wet. You don't have to, but that's just what I prefer. I'm going to take some of this Dollar Tree lacy ribbon and we're going to hot glue two strips, one on each side of the board. This is just going to add a little bit of interest, texture, and character to the sign. And once I had it on both sides, we're just going to flip it over and hot glue the ends to the back. And now it's time to bring in the set of stickers for this project. I love these. These are, again, very 3D. They have a very spring look, but it could be used year-round if you wanted to. I'm just going to start placing them kind of where I want to see them so that they're placing to the design as well as to the eye. Once I had them in place, I'm just going to add a little bit of dab of hot glue. Now, these also stick, but they're not as sticky as the other stickers we use. This is why I am using hot glue to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. 
once I had them in place, I'm just gonna add one more piece of that lacy ribbon to the back, hot glue is sufficient, and this is so that we can hang it, and I think it turned out adorable. I love the gray. I know I always use white, but I love that I use gray, and I think it just looks so beautiful. For the next Dollar Tree hack, I'm going to take a couple of these scrapbook papers. They came from a book that I bought at Hobby Lobby. For the first one, I'm going to use the striped green one, and I'm going to cut a strip that is 2 inches wide by 7 inches tall. Then I'm going to angle cut the ends at the top. We're just going to make it like a little pointy triangle area. And then we're going to cut off the little pointy side because we're going to make bookmarks. If you have followed me for a while, you know that I love making bookmarks. It's one of my favorite things to do. I'm going to use a hole puncher just to poke a hole <laughs> right on top. And then we're going to bring in the set of stickers for this project. I love these. They have such a beautiful, dainty, girly look to them. And I'm just going to place this one right at the bottom of this bookmark. Once I had it in place, I'm going to add more of that lacy ribbon from Dollar Tree, which I think will look great for this design. We're going to thread it through the hole, make a knot, a very simple knot, and then we'll be done with this one. But we have another bookmark to make. And look how cute this looks. This will be great to even customize with a name and gift them to friends and family. I'm going to give these two to my daughter because she loves to read and she's always looking for things to mark her books. All right, for the next one, we're going to use this beautiful blue design. I'm going to cut it in two and a half inches by seven inches. I'm going to angle cut one side. I'm going to show you a trick. If you take the little piece of paper that came off and you flip it and you use it as a guide, then you have equal size angle cuts. That's how easy that was. I hole punched another hole right on top. And now we're going to use this beautiful, love this sticker. I love the yellow contrast with the blue. Doesn't it look beautiful? I did the same thing. I'm just going to add some of that lacy ribbon to the top, tie it in a couple knots, and look how stunning these bookmarks look. You can use any design. This is just to inspire you. My daughter loved them. I love them. I think I'm going to make me a couple. I am going to transform this farmhouse truck. I'm not going to pretend you haven't seen like about a hundred versions <laughs> of these farmhouse trucks, but I'm going to give you one more idea. I am going to cut a piece of the wrapping paper to fit the truck, and then I'm going to cover with some masking tape the little rails portion. I'm going to spray the top of the farmhouse truck with some adhesive spray, and then the piece that I cut of wrapping paper was actually backwards, so I had to cut another piece place it on top and now I'm just cutting off the excess paper from all around the edges. I'm also going to poke where all the little like wheels and the windows are and then I'm going to use a technique that I learned from my upcycled life. I love this technique. You take a lighter just like this and you just very carefully of course burn the edges. They're going to burn just all the way up to the edge of the wood. This has to be done in a ventilated place. Make sure that you have water near you. Just take all the precautions as needed. But the effect that it gives it is stunning. It burns all the way down to the edge. And it gives it this burnt vintage antique look that I really love. Look how stunning that looks. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife. I'm just going to cut off that top portion where the masking tape was. and just going to remove it. Look how pretty it's already looking. You can leave it like this with the brown tone. I did decide to paint it white. I'm just going to use some Waverly Chalkman in the white. And then I'm going to use some antiquing wax by Waverly. And I'm just going to antique it just a little bit all around the edges. This is just going to add a little bit more character. And it's also going to match the style overall. I'm going to take these little cute little flowers. I believe I got these. I don't think it was Dollar Tree. I think it was Walmart. I'm just going to cut a couple little branches and hot glue them to the back of the truck. That way it's going to look like the bed of the truck is filled with these beautiful flowers. I'm going to cover the back with some masking tape just to make it a little cleaner and smoother. Then I'm going to take my little file, nail filer here. I'm just going to smooth off just those little flaky edges just a little bit. I'm going to add a couple of these wooden blocks from Dollar Tree behind each tire. That way it's going to be able to be standing up and I love this one. I cannot believe how beautiful it looks. Such a beautiful decor to add to your Valentine's Day.
For the next Dollar Tree craft, I'm going to take this galvanized heart I found in the crafting section. I removed the tag and then I'm going to take this beautiful wrapping paper. It has this beautiful pink tone with these hearts on it. And I'm going to cut several strips of about two inches. I'm not too worried about them being exactly two inches. I'm just going to cut several strips as close as possible to the same size of each other. I'm going to join them together and then I'm going to cut them in pieces that are four inch wide. I'm going to stack them up and then I'm going to take two at a time and I'm just going to face them back to back and I'm going to fold them and just kind of scrunch them on the bottom to make a little little something like this. Then I'm going to make a whole ton of them because we are going to start hot gluing them inside the heart. The key to this is to make sure that you are hot gluing them as close to each other as possible. But don't stress if you can see a little bit of the galvanized in between. We're going to fix that in a little bit. Friends, I would love to connect with you on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And I have those links down below in the description box. Check them out when you're done watching this video. So I'm going to add the last one here, but as I mentioned before, you're going to see that you're going to see a little bit through those and you're going to see some of those galvanized. I'm just going to add a few here and there right in between where you see the little gaps and a little bit of hot glue goes a long way. Then I took these little flowers, same ones from earlier, just another little branch. I'm going to take off the leafy greens as well as the flowers and I'm going to start hot gluing each little flower bud in between here and there the paper. This is just going to add a beautiful touch and then I'm going to take the greenery leafy part and I'm going to cut them into separate little leaves and then I'm just going to hot glue them here and there to add that vibrant touch of green. I think the green really made a huge difference. It's just stunning. I left the jute string but I think ribbon will look beautiful. Look how stunning this looks. It's definitely one of my favorites from today. I love the vibrant pink. Stunning. For the next Dollar Tree craft, I'm going to take three of these galvanized hearts that you can find in the crafting section of Dollar Tree. I grabbed three because I have a plan for them. Look at this beautiful wrapping paper. Wow, this one is stunning. I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to place all three hearts right next to each other and I'm going to trace them. Not think perfect, really just tracing them. And once I have them traced, I'm going to cut each and every one of them separately. Again, not looking for perfect cut because we are going to make these hearts smaller than what they already are. Once I have them cut, I'm going to fold them in half. And then I am going to cut about a half inch inside of the edge of each heart. This is going to give me a smaller heart, nicely cut, that's going to fit right in the center of the galvanized heart with a nice edge showing. I am not going to take the Gorilla Adhesive Spray once again. I'm just going to spray the back of the paper of each heart. And then I'm going to place them in the center of each galvanized heart. I'm going to just lightly press it. And then I'm going to start from the bottom up and just kind of fold and press in between each ridge. That way we're going to keep the beautiful design that these galvanized hearts have. And it's very easy. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other two hearts. And now that I have them done, I'm going to flip them over and I'm going to set them one on top of each other, just like you see, just about two inches apart from each other. Then I'm going to take this beautiful lace ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm going to hot glue it all the way from the bottom to the top. What I'm going to do on the top here is I am going to fold it just like that, just loop it. I'm going to cut off the axis and hot glue it to itself. This is going to give me a portion on the top where I can hang the decor from. Look how beautiful it already looks. I'm going to take these roses from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut three of them. I'm going to take the leafy part portion first and I'm going to hot glue it on the top of each heart. I'm going to take the rose apart and then I'm going to cut off just a little bit of the remaining stem of the rose and hot glue it on top of each leafy green. Again, that green really just makes this beautiful 
touch of color and i think this one is just so beautiful it is quite large and i just love that these galvanized hearts that that beautiful shape i just think it's stunning For the next Dollar Tree craft, I am going to take these wooden shelf. You can find these in the picture frame area. And I'm just going to cut off a piece of the same rose wrapping paper. And I'm going to start tearing the sides. I love using this technique. I'm going to use the same wooden shelf to guide me. Because I want it to look torn but not too, too much. So I'm just going to do the same thing on all edges. That way all of them are going to have that nice torn look. I'm going to dry fit it just to see if I need to cut more. And I did. The sides were just a little too snug. So I'm just going to cut about another quarter of an inch. And that did the work. I'm going to bring in some white paint. This is just going to paint the edges. I don't need the whole thing painted because you're not going to see the whole thing. But you are going to see those edges. So I'm just going to paint it with some white Waverly chalk paint and let that dry. I'm going to take these wooden numbers from Dollar Tree. I'm going to grab number four, number one, and number two. This is going to be for february 14th which is valentine's day i'm going to paint them in this beautiful green color by bear and i am going to just let that dry one coat was sufficient i'm going to take some mod podge and i way overdid it <laughs> i don't know what i was thinking i weighed too much on it but i did grab a little towel and i just removed the excess i don't know what i was thinking i just took my time very patiently and i just got it until it was nice thin coat once i had it where i wanted i'm just going to place the paper right on top it did get some bubbles. I have lost my battle with Mod Podge. <laughs> I don't know what to do, but you know, I have learned to just appreciate the bubbles. I flattened them out as much as I could. And then I took the two, the one, and the four, placed them to the bottom right. I'm gonna hot glue them in place, but I'm gonna leave a little space in between the one and the two. And that is about it for this one. What a beautiful concept. I love having the two, the one, and the four. I think it's just very clever, very subtle. And I love the, the paper and I love the way it looks. For the next wrapping paper hack, I am going to take this thrifted flag sign that I found at Goodwill and I'm just going to sand it down just a little bit because it had a little bit of a rough edge to it, just a little bit of a rough feel. I'm going to paint the edges just like I did the previous one. This one's going to be a little bit like the previous one, but I'm going to show you something different. I'm going to take this beautiful wrapping paper. Now, this one's not from Dollar Tree. I did find this one at, um, I think it was Home Goods. It was such a great quality and the design was beautiful. But you can do this with any Dollar Tree wrapping paper. I'm going to mark kind of like with my fingers where those edges are. And then I'm going to tear again. Again, I said that it's going to be similar to the one before. But this time, I'm not going to have anything guide me. I'm going to tear it up, <laughs> literally. I want these tear to be thick, very just very torn once i had it where i wanted i'm going to add mod podge once again this time i was very very careful i just added it until i had a thin coat and then i'm going to place it just like i did the other one right in the center i got bubbles in this one again even using the little roller i don't know what to do but in the end it turned out fine i'm going to add some mod podge on this one right on top to seal it this wrapping paper is thicker so i want it to be nice and protected once I had it in place and all dry, I am going to sand it down. This is going to give it a little bit more of distressed look, farmhouse look. I did end up distressing the edges just a little bit more with my sanding block. Once I had them in place, I'm going to take these beautiful little flowers that I got at Dollar Tree and some greenery grassy ones, and I'm going to place them right in the center. I'm going to drill a couple of holes on each side of the bundle. I'm going to thread some jute string so that we can time on the back. Once I had it in place, I'm going to take some burlap ribbon. I'm just going to make a very simple bow. I'm going to loop it, scrunch it in the center. I'm going to tie it with some jute string, and I'm going to angle cut the legs. I'm going to hot glue it right where the jute string is, and this is just going to add a nice touch and also hide the jute string. 
I'm going to cut off the excess stems from the bottom. I'm going to add a sawtooth hook to the back of it so that we can hang it. And that's it for this one. I got to say, this one is so beautiful. It has more neutral colors. but still very beautiful. Love the size and the quality of it because it's real wood. I think it's beautiful. These bamboo rings that I recently found, they come two in a pack. And one of them is larger than the other one. I loved these when I saw them and I grabbed them and I am going to make something so cute. So first thing I want to do is I want to paint them. I'm going to give them age it. One coat of Waverly Chalk Paint in the white. I'm also going to take three of these bamboo flat dowels. I get them on Amazon and I do have them on my Amazon store. They have similar color and because they're made out of bamboo, they have similar texture as the rings. So I'm going to paint three of them. I ended up needing one more, but I'll show you that in a little bit. Here's the canvas that's going to be my background. I thrifted this for $3.99 recently on a trip to the thrift store. And I'm going to give it two coats of Waverly Chalk Bin in the moss. Once everything was dry, I'm going to take the two rings and then the dowels. I'm going to just start cutting pieces that fit inside each ring. I'm going to make this into a bicycle, like a decorative bike. So I want the rings to be the wheels. And so I'm just going to cut them using my miter shear. And I'm just going to cut three for each. Now I ended up needing four, but I'll do that in a little bit. So once I had everything cut and my canvas was nice and dry, I'm going to attach the rings. So I want the larger one to be towards the front of the bike and then the smaller one towards the back of the bike. I'm just going to attach it using some hot glue. I'm also going to attach the inner pieces of the wheels with hot glue and I'm just going to crisscross them. Now this is when I realized that I should have had four per each. I wanted originally three, but they wouldn't fit quite right. So then I just added two and then I said, okay, let me just add the third one and then I'll just have to create one more for each wheel, which was no big deal. It's really easy. I painted another dowel, I cut it to size of each wheel and then let it dry. While those were dry, I'm just going to start hand painting the actual bike. I'm just going to do whatever, I don't know, whatever my heart feels <laughs> and free handed here. I'm just going to make the handles, a seat, and I'm going to use Waverly Chalk Paint and the white and just like a medium size brush. This is just going to give it that nice hand painted look. The star of the painting is the wheels, of course, and I'm going to add some florals. So once I had it where I wanted it, I'm going to bring in some pink, very hot pink florals that I got a couple of years back from Amazon. They weren't my favorite at the time, but I think for this design actually work. I cut four little branches and I'm just going to join them together using some nautical robe from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to wrap it around several times, secure it in place with some hot glue. And then once I had them join, I'm just going to hot glue this one on the top of the smaller wheel. And then once I had hot glue, I'm just going to kind of separate the little branches, the flowers, some going down, some going up, just to add a little bit of character and just some whimsiness to it. I'm going to do the same thing to the larger wheel, except I'm just going to pick about three of them. And I'm going to join them together, all facing the same way. I'm going to join it with some nautical rope and hot glue it, just like I did the previous one. Once I had them where I wanted them, I am going to attach those last couple of pieces. I think this really finished it off. I'm so glad I went with four instead of three. It just looks seamless and just beautiful. You're going to have to let me know what you think of this one. It's one of my favorite things I've ever made, at least hand painting wise. Although the wheels were not hand painted, I love the way it looks. It's perfect for spring. For this next at Dollar Tree Craft, I'm going to take one of these little Valentine's Day craft signs from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the little plaque from it and the jute string. And then we're going to take some of these dusting mops from Dollar Tree. One of them I already used for another project, but we're going to use the large one first. We're just going to hot glue it right on top. Very easy. You've seen me use these dusting mops before. They just add a lot of texture and coziness to any decor, any craft you make. Then I'm going to add the other piece right next to it. 
once I add it, I'm just going to fluff it in the middle. So they kind of join together and you will never know that they were two separate pieces. Just like magic. I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to cut the excess all around the heart. I'm not going to lie. You know, this is messy, <laughs> but take your time. Be patient and just trim here and there where you need it until you have what you want. I'm going to take this little beautiful peony from Amazon. I get them in bundles and this is a beautiful pink. I'm going to use some other ones towards the end of the video. But this one we're just going to hot glue right there towards the right side of the heart. And I'm just going to move the leaves around until I kind of know where I want them and then hot glue them in place. Instead of just leaving them wherever they fell, I just felt like it just needed to be moved around just a little bit. I'm going to add these tiny little flowers. I think I got these at, at home if I'm not mistaken. Just going to take three two to the right side and one to the left side so dainty so pretty i thought it needed something else i found this jute and pink kind of ribbon i want to say it was maybe dollar general but it could be dollar tree i'm gonna make a very simple ball just loop it in the center scrunch it tie with a jute string and then hot glue it underneath the flower i think this just added just enough touch of that ribbon to make it very cool and then i'm going to add a small little jute string to the back secure with hot glue as well as some duct tape and that's it for this one it's such an easy craft i love the background i love that it's so fluffy and bright and that pink flower is just the perfect amount of color beautiful every day i got your back here you can count on me for that the next Dollar Tree craft, I'm going to take this love sign from Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the jute string as well as the little wreath that it came with it. Although it's very pretty as it is, it's not quite my style so I'm going to juju it up just a little bit. I'm going to remove the glue and just sand it down quite a bit just to kind of make sure any glue that's there would be removed. After I wiped it very well, I'm going to give it a two coats of Waverly Chalk Paint in the white. And there you have it, nice and dry and bright. Now I'm going to bring in the same ribbon from earlier and we are going to trace the L, the V, and the E of the sign. And I'm just going to kind of measure, cut, and hot glue as needed. So as you can see, it's very easy to do this and you can use any ribbon you may have. I think a white ribbon, like a lacy one, would have looked beautiful too. I just didn't have any. I'm going to take this little tiny wreath form from the Target dollar spot. They come three in a little pack for $3. I'm going to hot glue one right around the O. Then I'm going to take this leftover roses on this pick as well as the little leafy greens. And I'm going to hot glue the leafy greens first to fill in some of the gaps from the wreath. And then I'm going to take the roses and just hot glue them towards the kind of like right upper corner of the O. And that way it just looks nice and pretty. This frame I got at Dollar Tree. It had some decor on it. I used it for another DIY during the fall season. I'm just going to hot glue the love right on the kind of right bottom side. And I did mark where I needed to hot glue. That way I knew exactly where it was going to be glued at. And look how beautiful this looks. Talk about taking any simple craft that you find at Dollar Tree and making it your own. Love it. For this next craft, I'm going to start with a sublimation printout here that I have on my computer. I printed it on sublimation paper and then I have a canvas tote bag that I have because I have these available on my Etsy shop. Once I had the printed design i flipped the design when i printed it because once i place it on the canvas then it's going to look straight i place some tape so that it would be secure this is heat resistant tape then i place it on my heat press once i remove the paper you have the beautiful design now i'm going to take these bundles of just leafy greens that i got at at home and i'm going to place them right inside i love using tote bags for decor and i have one every season in my living room I'm going to take these sunflowers. I used them recently in another DIY and I'm just going to place three of them inside the canvas tote bag. But of course, you can use any flowers you have. And here's a little trick. When you lift up the strap, make sure that you thread the kind of straps in between the florals. That way it looks natural and pretty. And it just looks like I spent the day at the flower shop shopping for flowers. I love this one.
for this next spring craft i'm going to take this ring form that i found at target dollar spot it was three dollars and i thought it was a great deal i'm also going to take some uh, this is a drop cloth that i already had on hand i'm going to cut a six inch piece i also use my cricut to create a graphic that says welcome and i'm just going to place it right on the center of the drop cloth and then i'm just going to stencil it using a makeup sponge and some waverly chalk bin in the ink and then once i removed it it just looks like a printout it's beautiful i'm going to place it right in the center and then i'm going to flip it over and once i cut it and then i'm just going to hot glue it in place of course hot glue would be plenty sufficient but the key is you want to make sure that you hot glue it and then you hot glue the other side while you are stretching it because you want to make sure it's not going to fall on me so it's not going to drop down so I'm just going to tug it a little bit and then hot glue it and set it in place. Just to make sure it's safe, I did add a little bit of hot glue in between the ring and the drop cloth and that worked really well. Here's the remaining part of that peony bundle that I got on Amazon. I'm just going to bundle them up and I'm going to place them in a little swag style. And I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. Take some jute string and I am going to wrap it around in the center. Hot glue it to the left side of the welcome. To make it even more secure i am going to add some wire and then i'm just going to flip it over and twist it in the back this is just going to make sure it's not going to fall if the wreath form is going to be outdoors then i'm going to take the other peony and i'm just going to hot glue it right in the center taking the little stem poking it right through the drop cloth bending the remaining in the back i am going to hot glue a piece of drop cloth to the back just to cover things up and make sure no one's going to get poked and it also looks nice and pretty. Then it's time to just add a ribbon. A very simple ribbon that I had is a ticking stripe beige and white one. And then that's it for this one. I love this wreath. It's one of my favorites. I think the Piani decor is so pretty. The simplicity of it is stunning. Perfect for spring or any other time of the year. I love it. Make a full window. I'm sure you see something similar like this, but I wanted to make it because they just screamed that window. So I'm going to remove the little bead hanging portion, but I'm going to put those to the side because I'm going to come back to them for another DIY. I removed all of them and then I am going to join each board. Now I'm going to use a combination of hot glue and permanent glue. Just going to put a little bit of each. That way I have a strong hold, but also a fast hold. After I attached all four of them together, I realized that some of it did not just hold very well, or at least there was a gap. So I want to cover it up using these flat dials that I get on Amazon and I do have on my Amazon store. Don't forget guys, anything that I say that I get on Amazon, chances are is on my Amazon store. You can also follow me there and anytime I add any new items, you'll be notified. So I'm just going to start marking and cutting with my miter shears, which by the way, I do have on my Amazon store as well. And I'm going to start covering up those gaps. Then I decided to just go ahead and trim the whole thing because it just added this cute little touch and it just kind of brought everything together. And that's what I did. Once I had the window completely built, I'm going to give it two coats of Waverly Chalk Bin in the white. While the window dries, I'm going to take this thrifted wreath. Now, this wreath form is gorgeous. It has like a wire form, and then they covered it in this beautiful grapevine style. I thrifted it a while ago, and I just want to give it a new look for Valentine's Day or maybe even spring. I'm going to take these magnolia leaves, little picks that I have. I had them for so long, and I keep using little pieces of them. I put one to the, to the top right and then another one to the bottom right and then i'm going to take some of these boxwood that i get from amazon and i'm just going to place them here and there just to fill it in these sunflowers are beautiful i got them at home goods they were on clearance for eight dollars three of them i thought they were a great deal such good quality and i love that color i took one of the leaves and i added it to the top portion and then i'm just going to hot glue the sunflower white to the center I realized that the window was not sturdy enough, so I want to give it some support on the back. So I added three painter sticks and I stapled them to place. This worked very well. I'm going to take this tiny little eye uh, hook and I'm just going to place it on the back, making sure that the open side is facing downward. 
This is because I want to add one of these jute strings to the wreath form. And we're going to hang it so that it is tied on the back of it, just like you see here. And that's it for this one. What a beautiful full window. Did not spend much money at all. This wreath is gorgeous right on top of it. It's one of my favorites. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take these two little wooden flowers. You can get them at a Dollar Tree. They come in a little pack and my crop a dial. And I'm just going to crop a hole right on top of each. I do have the crap doll in my Amazon store as well. I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalked Bane in their pink tone. Actually, it was one coat. And then I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to take those beads that it came with, or the little boards came with, and I'm going to remove them. And I'm going to make a little bead garland. Why not? I already had the beads, and I thought they were gorgeous. Already had that, like this beautiful whitewash look. I'm going to thread them using some of these stitch needles because it makes it so much easier. And I don't have a specific pattern. I'm just threading them. Once I reach the end, I'm going to bring the little flowers and I'm just going to attach them. I'm going to thread it through a little hole. I'm going to bring the jute string up and then I'm going to thread it through that last bead. And this way it's going to give me the knot in between two beads instead of the flower and the bead. So once I thread it through that bottom bead, I'm just going to tie it. You're going to see me do it a couple of knots. And then that way the knot is going to fit right inside that bead and you won't even see that knot. I did the same thing on the other side and that's it. I kept them so simple. I thought about adding something to the flowers, but I love simplicity and I love how dainty and cute they look. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this wreath form. It is a wire, it is heart shaped, and it's a pretty good size. I'm also going to take one of these tiles from the automobile section at Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut them into strips. If you have fabric scissors, this is the best way to cut these tiles. My regular scissors were not doing a good job, but fabric scissors are awesome, and I do have these in my Amazon store. I cut the strips to about two and a half maybe some of them three inches no need for them to be completely even i'm going to start wrapping the wreath form all around there's no magic to this no special technique pretty much just make sure that all the seams are on the back of the wreath form that way it's going to look nice and clean in the front done wrapping it up and then i'm just going to cut off some of those back little corners just so that it's cleaner you don't need to because they're in the back but just so that it's a bit more smooth and clean i'm going to take these faux ferns from dollar tree and i'm going to grab two of each color they have like a lighter color and a dark color and i'm going to place two facing down and two facing up on the left side of the heart i'm going to then take this beautiful flower also from home goods on sale i grabbed a bundle and this one is left over from christmas and i just hot glued it right in the center doesn't that look so pretty then i'm going to take this little grassy picks i'm just going to take two of the little grass hot glue them to the top and one to the bottom this is just going to add a little bit of touch of greenery this heart is stunning it's definitely my favorite from today has such a romantic look to it beautiful For the next DIY, I'm going to take this farmhouse truck. I got a Dollar General for $15. I thought it was a great deal. I got it about a couple of years ago. I used it just like it came, just like you see, but then I placed it in a shelf and I was just not in love with the purple. So I'm just going to give it a new look, perfect for either Valentine's or spring. I already removed all of my decor from Christmas and I have winter decor, but adding some Valentine's Day decor here and there to it just adds so much festive feel. I removed all the florals from it and I just added a fresh coat of this moss from Dollar Tree and I'm going to bring in a couple of these magnolia leaves picks once again. I'm just going to add them towards the back of the bed. Here's another one of those flown flowers. Now it is missing a few petals. I'm going to try to make it work. I'm just going to place it right towards the front there. And some of these little pink flowers that I believe are from Walmart. I'm going to cut different little branches from it. I'm just going to start adding them here and there, making sure that the ones in the back are taller and the ones on the front are shorter. I'm going to use one of them in the front to cover where the petals are missing. And I think this truck is stunning. This is my console table and that's where I placed it and that's where it's going to live all through spring. For 
the next Dollar Tree craft, I'm going to take this wooden heart sign from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to remove the little black portion from it very carefully because I do want to reuse it. I'm not going to remove the paper from the front, but you can do that if you want to. I'm just going to sand it down using my electric sander. It's quicker and it just roughens up that surface and it keeps it very matte because we are going to give it a couple of coats of paint. So I'm just going to wipe it down really well and then give it two coats of Waverly chalk paint in the white and then of course let it fully dry. I am then going to bring in these printable that I got and I printed here in a laser printer. Now I have never attached or transferred any color printed graphics on anything. I've always used Mod Podge with just like a black and white design. So this is going to be a first for me. Let's see if it works out. I'm going to apply some Mod Podge. This is after I remove the excess paper from around the design. Once I had the Mod Podge where I wanted it, I'm just going to place the design, making sure that I smooth out any bubbles and that it is as attached as possible. My mistake was that I did not give it enough time for it to dry. And you're going to see here in a minute what happened. But I'm going to put it to the side and let it dry. The little black board, I am going to paint in that pink again from Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint. I'm going to give it two coats. This is just going to add it to the design, some color, and it's going to look so cute. All right, so here's where things go a little south. I'm going to use the wet rag, and I'm sure you've seen this before. You just want to wet the surface with a damp towel and just start removing that top portion of the paper and revealing the design. Because I did not give it enough time to dry, it did remove a lot of the design. It was my fault. I should have left it for a few more hours, but I just wanted to rush it. <laughs> I was impatient. Now, I am going to make it work because it does have a distressed look, and I do like that look. Although I was not planning on it, we're going to make it work. So I removed as much as possible from that paper. Then I'm going to take a permanent marker, and I'm just going to write the word Valentine's right on the little pink board. Simple. I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom of the heart. That way, it has the same kind of look that it had originally. These beads I already had on hand. They were already stained this color from previous projects. Some of them are brown, some are yellow, some are blue. So I'm just going to start creating some sort of pa pattern that kind of matches the amount of beads I have. I'm going to thread it through the top just like I did with the bead garland. I'm going to just thread it through the first bead and tie it and make sure that you do not see that knot. And I did the same thing on the other side and that's it for this one. Now I got to say... I kind of like the way it turned out. I was going to add some florals, but it's, I said, you know what? Let's just leave it like this. I think it's so, so cute. For the next Dollar Tree craft, I'm going to take this canvas style sign from Dollar Tree. You can find these all the time in the picture frame area. So I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and, of course, let it dry. Then I'm going to take this round brush. It's kind of like a waxing brush. I'm also going to take some Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the country gray. And I'm just going to make some stripes going from top to bottom. The stripes are going to be about two inches apart from each other. And then I'm going to bring in one of the Dollar Tree decals. You know, I love using these decals. They're so wonderful to use. And this one has a beautiful scripture. There's one of my favorites. And it's about love. So I thought it was perfect. I'm going to place it to the right side of the sign. And that's it. <laughs> it doesn't get any easier than this. I just placed it the best I could, making sure there's no bubbles. And I think it turned out so adorable. How cute would this be added to any decor already in your home? Just to add a little bit of scripture but also just a beautiful message, perfect for Valentine's or any other day of the year. I wanted to make some custom signs and we're gonna start with this one. They're pretty large and I love making large items that I can either resell or put in my own decor and really stand out. I give it one coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and I always forget to add this little like Lazy Susan. It makes painting so much easier. I'm gonna take a small thin point permanent marker and my ruler I'm just going to start making some stripes. This is going to give it a look of a planked sign. I'm going to bring in one of Essential Stencils. Stencils, this one is gorgeous and it's so large. It says count your blessings. And it's a little snug for this sign, but it worked out really well. I'm going to center it as close as possible to each edge. And then this is one of the brushes from Essential Stencil. And I'm going to use Waverly Chalk Paint and the ink. And I'm just going to start stenciling it. 
I'm using a new technique, which is adding very little amount of paint on your brush and then just kind of going in a circular motion instead of going up and down. I saw them doing this in a tutorial recently and I thought, let me try it. And it was perfect. I never strive for perfection, but let me tell you, this was as perfect or as close as perfect as it could be. Now I'm going to take these little flat dowels. They're bamboo. I get them on Amazon and they're perfect for crafting. They're very flexible, very easy to customize in size. I'm going to stain them using Waverly and taking wax. And then I'm just going to place one on the top and one on the bottom. I'm going to mark and cut with my miter shears. And then I'm going to hot glue in one to the top and one to the bottom. to add a little bit of greenery i love the white black and green combination so i had these leftover leaf picks from another bundle i'm just going to hot glue them to the left side of the sign because right next to that b there's like that little empty side and i just wanted to fill it in i'm going to add some hot glue to the back and a little bit of this nautical row from dollar tree to be able to hang the sign and i think it's stunning it has such a traditional farmhouse look i love the stun so it is just gorgeous look how beautiful for the next dollar tree craft i'm going to take another one of those canvases and i'm going to give it again one coat of rustoleum chalk paint and the linen white and let it dry this bundle of sun souls is called love like jesus and they're beautiful they're meant to make these little tiny signs but I ended up choosing one and I'm just going to place it towards the bottom right corner of the sign. I'm going to tape it and that way it's not going to move on me. I'm going to use another one of Essential Stencils. Stencil brushes, they're wonderful. And I'm going to use this Farmhouse Red Chalk Paint by Rust-Oleum. And again, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to grab some paint. I'm going to thin it out in the cap. And then I'm going to use a towel to remove excess paint. And then I'm going to start just stenciling, doing the round and around motion. And that worked really well again i mean come on guys seriously all right so now bringing in these gorgeous rub-on transfers i found one that i thought would look great in the upper left corner of the sign i cut it out i'm just going to peel it from the back and then i'm going to lightly place it right where i want it i'm leaving some space on the edges because i am going to frame this one I'm going to use a scraper, but you can use whatever you want. Something that you can just start pressing on the paper or the plastic and start rubbing on. The technique that I've learned to use is basically you just want to rub on and lift very little, very slowly until all the transfer has transferred to your surface. Just like that. I did decide to add a couple other ones here and there. And look how pretty this is looking. It's so romantic. I love it. All right, so now onto the framing. We're going to use those same flat dowels. Again, we're just going to mark, cut, and hot glue all around the edges. And we're just about done with this one. Such a beautiful, romantic look this sign has. I love the red and the white, but let me tell you, these transfers are gorgeous. I love all the detail. Just so great to make custom signs. For the next Dollar Tree craft, I'm going to take one of these wooden shelves from Dollar Tree. It comes with the shelf the string and a little ring so that you can hang the shelf from. But we're not gonna use those. We're gonna make a little vertical sign. I'm gonna give it one coat over Stolium Chalked Man in the linen white. Of course, we're gonna let it fully dry. After it dried, it was a little rough to the touch. So I'm just gonna lightly sand it with a very fine sanding block. And it's just gonna smooth it out so that my transfer can rub on very nicely. I dusted it and wiped it really well. And now look at these rub on transfers they are st patrick's day themed and i thought i don't necessarily celebrate st patrick's i thought it was so cute very festive and they would make great gifts for either teachers or family members like i said it's going to be a vertical sign so i grabbed this little farmhouse truck with gnomes on them so adorable and again i'm just going to start rubbing it on and lifting as i go And 
And look how cute that looks. It's perfect. I'm also going to bring in these stencils, also from Essential Stencil, and I am going to just tape it to the top of the farmhouse truck, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to stencil it with very little paint in the brush, remove the excess, and start doing the circular motion technique. Doesn't that look so pretty? That green against the white? Gorgeous. All right, we're going to do something very different here. I'm going to take this nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I'm going to knot it. I'm going to make sure that this knot is really tight. Then I'm going to cut off the excess from the top and the excess from the bottom, making sure that I'm cutting as close as possible to the knot. And then I'm going to hot glue it on top of each little tiny hole that you see on the sign. This is why I did not fill them because I knew I wanted to create something like this. I'm going to do that all four corners. Once I had them all done, I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to add some nautical rope to the back. Again, this is just to give us the option to hang it or it'll just look like it has it and we don't have to hang it if we don't want to. But look how cute this turned out. It's definitely one of my favorites. Very surprised because I don't decorate for St. Patrick's Day, but I think it's so stinking cute. For the next Dollar Tree craft, I'm going to take this little dry erase board that I found in the craft section at Dollar Tree. I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm going to cut off another one of these rub-on transfers with the St. Patrick's Day theme, and I'm going to place it right in the center. I didn't do anything to the frame because I thought the color of the frame really complemented the design of the rub-on transfer, and I think it worked out really well. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to rub and pull as I go. I was surprised as to how well these Robon transfer really stuck to the shiny surface of the dry erase board. I loved it. I'm going to take these little faux ferns that I already had on hand from another project. I'm going to cut some little parts from the end and just hot glue it very carefully, small amount of glue, because I want it to look very natural as I do not want to add anything to the center. I removed the back jute string. I'm just going to add some ribbon to add a little bit more of a custom look. And we can hang these little sign. And I got to tell you, again, this one is one of my favorites. I think it's so pretty. I love the white and the green with the light brown color. I think it's gorgeous. Again, one that you can gift someone who loves St. Patrick's Day. Or just add to your own decor. Cause I wanna be close to for the next craft, I'm going to take this little wooden house that I got at Target Dollar Spot. It came in a set of two, I believe, and this one had a brown tone. So I'm going to lighten it up with some Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the linen white. And I'm going to do a dry brush technique because I do not want any paint to drip on the inside of the little windows. Although a little bit got in there, but using the dry brush technique really helped. So I'm just going to keep adding layers until I have what I want. I left the sides brown because I wanted to have more of a farmhouse distressed look. Once I had it dry, I am going to take this other rub-on transfer with the roses design. I picked this one because it has a flat side that's going to look great on this house. So I'm just going to keep placing it and just kind of keep moving it up until I see where I love to see it. I'm going to press it down and then again, we're just going to rub it on and lift the plastic slowly but surely until the entire transfer is transferred. Now with this one, because the little windows are on there, I did have to grab a, an X-Acto knife and just cut off the little excess transfer that you see there so that we can still have that window look. Once I had it where I wanted it, I took my sanding block and I am going to sand down the edges as well as the design to give it a little bit more of a distressed look. And let me tell you, these rub-on transfer distressed beautifully. I loved it. I kind of kept the same green look going vertically. And I loved it so much, I decided to add one more. So I grabbed a smaller one and I added it to the other corner, rubbed it on, removed the plastic, and did the same exact thing. I just sanded it down on the edges and distressed the top very lightly. This gave the whole house a whole new look, a very romantic farmhouse look, and I loved it. This transfer looks like it's been on this house since the beginning, and I think it's so I'm going to start with this planked board. This is another one of those new finds that I found at my Dollar Tree. 
I removed the jute string and I'm just going to give it one coat of Waverly Chalk Paint in the white. I'm just going to do one because I am going to eventually distress it so I'm not looking for full coverage. Once it was dry, it's looking nice and pretty. We are going to use this mesh reusable stencil from A Maker Studio. I've used this in the past. They are wonderful. They are sticky on one side and they work just like a sticker. You press them after you remove the backing from it. And once you had it where you want it, you're just going to want to use either paint or in this case, I'm going to use A Maker Studio's gel art ink to stencil it. I'm going to use the squeegee. And I'm just going to start spreading it. So you just want to spread it and remove any excess as you go. I do have a link down below in the description box so you can always find these uh, items if you would like to try them. So once I had it nice and stenciled, we're going to remove the top and look how gorgeous this looks. And it's so easy. All right, so we're going to put that to the side and we are going to take this wooden love sign that I found at Dollar Tree. They are really cute. They come two in a pack and I'm going to give it one coat of Waverly Chalk Paint in the Agave Tone. Now I'm going to bring in the board. It's nice and dry. I'm going to distress it as I mentioned earlier. Just going to use my electric sander, distress it a little bit on the middle section and a lot heavier in the edges. And then we're just going to dust it and clean it, making sure it's dust free. I'm going to bring in a couple of, of these hooks that I do get on Amazon. I'm going to add a couple to the top, two inches away from the edge. When I added them, I realized that it split my board because it's not real wood. It's more of an MBF board. I did have to fill it in with some wood filler just to make sure it looks nice and neat. But it is still a strong hold and the board is not too heavy, so it worked out. I'm going to attach the love right onto the bottom right corner of the board just using hot glue. Here is the first bead ring that we're going to use. Oh, this one is gorgeous. It's black. They measure 10 by 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up one of the little loops on one end, separate them, and I'm going to thread it through one of the hooks first. Then I'm going to bring it over to the other side and just kind of measure kind of where I want to see the little hanging handle to go to, cut it using my wire cutters, and then just curl the one end using my pliers. That way we can hang it on the other side. So simple. I'm going to use some of this boxwood and I'm just going to hot glue it to the left side of the board. That way it just fills it in, adds a little bit more texture. And then I'm going to add a couple of flowers, just these little, little white ones to cover up the glue section. And that's it for this one. It's one of my favorites. I love the background and I love that bead hanging string. Just gorgeous. For the next Dollar Tree hack, I'm going to take this little house board that you can find at Dollar Tree in the character's square aisle. I'm also going to use another one of those reusable stencils from A Maker Studios. This one says Faith, Family, and Freedom. I'm going to cut off the portion that I need and then I'm just going to make sure that it's dust free, the surface, and attach it right to the center. This time I'm going to use a regular Waverly chalk bin and I'm going to use this stenciling brush to stencil it. I'm just going to thin out the paint on the brush and then just use a circular motion to stencil it. I'm going to remove the stencil and reveal the beautiful design. It's gorgeous. So perfectly placed. All right, so we are going to wash that stencil, remove the paint, and reuse it another time. I got a little bit outside of the stencil, so I'm just going to use some Waverly chalk paint in the ink. Just dry brush it a little bit here and there to cover it up. We're going to bring the second set of beads in this ring. I'm going to just kind of fold it in an eight form and then fold it in half. This was my first thought on what I want to do. I shaped it into a circle and then I realized it's too small. It just covers up way too much of the design. So I decided to open it up just like did the other one. And then I am going to cut off exactly what I need, leaving enough space in the center to make sure that you can see the design. So I'm just going to cut it once again using my wire cutters. I'm going to fold one end into a loop. That way I can join the two sides together as they were in the beginning. And now I have a smaller circle. And then we're just going to shape it as best as we can into a circle. And we're just going to attach it using some hot glue some of this green boxwood i'm just going to hot glue it towards the top of the ring and again some of those little white flowers to hide the glue this is just going to add a nice texture very farmhouse like 
And then we need something to hang the little house from because I did remove the jute string. I decided to bring in some of this white nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to hot glue it to the front. Let me know what you think of that. Does it look messy? I kind of like it, but let me know what you think down in the comments. But I love, love the way this one turned out. For the next Dollar Tree hack, I'm going to take this Love Lives Here wood round sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove everything from it and I'm going to sand down all the glitter that's on top. You can find these pretty much in every season. This one happens to be in their Valentine's collection. Once I had it nice and sanded, I'm going to dust it off and wipe it really, really well. I'm going to spray adhesive some craft paper. So I'm going to spray it on top. And this craft paper came from a bundle book that I got. And I believe it was Hobby Lobby. And I place it right in the center. And then I'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut off the excess paper. And that way I have a nice smooth edge. To make it even smoother, I am going to sand down those edges using my sanding block from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do it in a downward motion. This is going to make sure that it's going to be even smoother. Here's the third set of beads that I'm going to use. I love this one. It has that natural wood color. I'm going to use for this one a combination of hot glue and more permanent glue so that I can have a nice strong hold. Once I had it, I'm just going to flip it over and place it right there. Super cute and so easy. All right, so then it's time to bring in some greenery. This is just a combination of a few greeneries that I already had on hand. I'm going to start hot gluing it to the top. My friends, if you love DIYs just like this in video form, but if you also love the written step-by-step -step form, I do have a blog that I post every single week, and it is linked down below in the description box, so check it out. All right, so I just continue to add some greenery and then I'm going to add some pink flowers. I think it really complements the design overall of the sign. So I'm just going to add three of them right in the center of all the greenery. Now we need something to hang it from. So I'm going to use some of this burlap ribbon and I'm just going to hot glue it to the back. It's kind of thick. I wish I had a thinner one and I guess I could have cut it in half, but I didn't think about it till now. <laughs> so I'm just going to hot glue it and then I'm also going to add some uh, duct tape and this is just going to add more security and it's also kind of just make it a little bit cleaner in the bag and i gotta say this was one of my favorites i love the design and that bead ring around the edge is just so stunning i love the natural wood color and the colors just complement each other For the next Dollar Tree hack, I am going to take the leftover beads from both sets, the black and the white ones, just going to join them together in a little bucket. We are going to use them to make some keychains. I think these are so much fun to make. I'm also going to use some jute string in the black and the white and a stitching needle. I'm just going to start threading them. I'm going to make three of them. One's going to be black and white and the other ones are going to be one black and one white. So I'm just going to thread 14 beads in total and I'm going to do that again with the white one and the black ones as well. All right, so I have all the beads threaded and now it's time to kind of build the keychain. So I want them to have a little tassel on each one. So I'm going to show you how I did one. Now these little ring, they are binder rings that you can find at Dollar Tree. You can also use keychain rings, but I just didn't have any on hand and these work out really well. I'm going to tie it to the end of each little bead section and then I'm going to just pull out a whole ton of juice string because we're going to create the tassel. I'm going to use a piece of cardboard to guide me. It's about maybe five inches wide. I'm just going to wrap it around several times. Then I'm going to use one end of the string left over on the keychain and I'm just going to tie it on one end. I'm going to slide it out and make sure that it is tightened securely. And then I'm going to use another piece of jute string. I'm just going to tie it towards the top of the uh, keychain. You know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've seen this done before. And I'm just going to secure it with a very simple knot. And then I'm just going to just cut open all the little loops from the tassel. And then I'm going to cut the remainder, like the excess. I just want to cut it to a size that just matches the size of the keychain. I did that with all three of them. And they are so cute. These would be great to sell at craft shows or even to give to family members or friends. I love them. For the next craft, I'm going to take this Target Dollar Spot wreath form. They have these all the time. They're $3 and they usually have them in different types of greenery. I'm going to remove about one third of the greenery from this one, just on one side. And then I'm going to hot glue those ones that I pulled out in between the, the ones that are left. That way it's just going to make it look fuller and just nicer. 
I'm going to take this Dollar Tree hat and I'm just going to remove everything from it. And then I'm going to start separating some of the strands just like this. And they pull out really easily. Then I'm going to wrap the remaining portion of the wreath form with it. This is going to add texture and just really make it look so pretty. And then it's time to add some flowers. I'm just going to add whatever I have on hand. These are from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to thread them through all the greenery. Just hot gluing it in place. This is going to be a wreath form that's going to look very feminine, very gentle, just very sweet. And then I'm going to add some beads. These are some beads that I already had here at home. They're not leftover from the other projects, but you can certainly use any leftover. And I'm just going to hot glue them right there to the little top. I'm just going to put three of them. Look how cute this looks. I love it. For the next craft, I'm going to take that stitching needle once again. I'm going to thread through this thick, fluffy white yarn. And I'm going to poke it through the center of this basket. This basket is also from Target Dollar Spot. And I'm going to start threading it in and out that middle section where it folds. I'm going to make like a triangle kind of look. So I'm going to go all the way around. And then once I had it all threaded, I went right back around and made it into a V shape. Just like you see there. Then I'm going to take the yarn again. I'm just going to wrap those... Um, uh, handles that it already had. I'm just going to do that just to add more color and texture to it. Once I had them in place, I'm going to thread some more of these wooden beads. I'm not going to paint them or anything. Again, these are some that I already had at home, but you can certainly use any leftover from the previous projects if you want. I'm going to make two sets of three and I'm going to thread it back up the two top ones so that I can have the two strings on one end and tie them to the end of one of the handles. I'm going to do the same thing with the other set. This is just going to add a little tassel kind of look. I love the way this basket turned out. It went from cute to very textured and very custom. I love it. With this one, it has more of a farmhouse look and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. Look how large they are. They're really good size for crafting. Now they do come very wrinkly and rolled up. So you do have to iron it just a little bit to make sure it's just a little bit more flat. All right, this bathroom sign I did a couple of years ago for my guest bathroom. We placed it on the door. We are currently in the process of updating our bathroom. So I removed everything from it and I'm gonna reuse it for today's project. I'm gonna remove the vinyl that it had on it. Now this board was already painted white and I did a full frame on it just using some black paint. If you do not have a board like this, you can always use one of these from Dollar Tree, paint it white and then add a black frame to it. I'm gonna sand it down just a little bit so it has a little bit more of a uh, distressed look on the edges and also to just remove any just grime that it may have had. I'm going to take the fabric, I'm going to place it on top and leave just a little bit of that black edge showing. I'm going to mark where I need to cut and use my rotary cutter to cut it. And then I'm going to just uh, kind of cover the little portion that's left over on the bottom with a piece of the same fabric. I'm going to use a Mod Podge to attach the fabric. You can use adhesive spray, which I've used before. This time, I'm just going to try the Mod Podge. I'm just going to add a small, thin layer to it. I'm going to do the top first and then move on to the bottom. Alright, so I just attached that smaller portion and I'm going to remove little bit of the excess fabric for a smooth finish. I'm just going to roll it and make sure that it's as attached as possible. These little farm animals I got recently at Dollar Tree. Can you believe that? For $1.25, these are actually a really good deal. They're a good size and I think for $1.25, it's a really good deal. All right. I removed the bottom by scoring it a little bit with a blade knife and then just kind of twisting it back and forth until it's removed. I did use my wire cutter just to cut off any excess that may have been left. And then I'm gonna sand it down using a sanding block for a smooth finish. I am gonna paint them white, although black, they look gorgeous. But for this specific project, I need them to be white. So I'm just gonna give them a couple of coats of Waverly Chalk Bin and the white. And then of course, let it fully dry. This is because we are going to place these right on top of the board. I'm going to sand down the edges just a little bit as well as the surface for a smooth finish and a little bit of a farmhouse look, distress look. And because they had that black undertone, it's just distressed perfectly. I'm going to take a permanent marker and I'm just going to write the word moo on the cow, the word oink on the piggy, 
and the word cluck on the chicken. How stinking cute. Now you can use a vinyl cutter uh, like a Cricut to create these, but I thought it would be so much easier and quicker to just um, handwrite it. I'm going to hot glue them right on the board, one on top of each other, making sure that it's from large to small. And I think it's so adorable. This would be great in a kitchen. This would be great in a dining room. I just love the way this one turned out. You gotta understand that we get one chance, one chance. For the next Dollar Tree hack, I'm going to take this clear tray. I believe I found it at Dollar Tree's party section. I'm going to give it one coat of this uh, spray paint by Rust-Oleum in the white. Now I made the mistake that I only painted the top portion instead of painting it all and you're going to see in a little bit that I had to just uh, just paint a little bit more hand paint it with some chalk paint. This is the beautiful fabric we're going to use for this project. I am going to iron it once again. It is gorgeous. It has bikes on them and some beautiful sunflowers. I'm going to use my microwave cover because <laughs> it's actually a pretty good size and I'm just going to cut off a piece of the fabric and then use that cover to just cut off the kind of like the round circle for the bottom of my what will be a pocket for the plate. So I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and cut off the excess fabric. I realized that the uh, piece was just a little too tall, too high. So I'm just going to cut off another piece from it until I have a piece that fits what I need. I'm going to place it on the bottom of the plate to create a pocket. I'm just going to hot glue it section by section. And then I am going to bring some wood beads. These are half wood beads that I get on Amazon. And I am just going to hot glue them onto the bottom of the plate. The way I ensure that I have all of them separated evenly in between is by placing two of them and then adding one in the center of that, then one in the center of that, and then the other one in the center of that. This is going to ensure I have the closest separation between each bead and without having to measure because who wants to measure all these beads? <laughs> I don't. All right, once I have them hot glued, it's time to add some florals. I think it's looking so beautiful. Because the fabric is just busy and it has a lot of color, I decided to keep the florals just in the white tones. That way it's going to look fresh and just kind of simple. I love simplicity. So I just added a combination of a few florals that I have like a yellowish tone with a white tone. And I think this one is absolutely adorable. I love the way it turned out. I can't believe we used a party plate for this. Gorgeous. For the next Dollar Tree hack, I'm going to take this beautiful home fabric as well as this blue one and this green one. Again, I am going to iron them just for a, a flatter look, but it doesn't have to be extremely flat ironed. Really, truly, just as long as you get most of the wrinkles out. This project, we're going to be covering several books that I already have on hand. So the first thing I want to do, I want to hem one end of the fabric. It hams so easily. I'm going to use the little tiny iron that I've been using. And by the way, this is a Cricut one, but I do have one in my Amazon store, which is just adorable and not too expensive. So check it out. Again, it is linked below. All right. So I cut off the excess fabric, leaving enough on the other end to hem it as well. Once I have that hemmed, it's time to just kind of place it and then find the uh, a portion where I need to cut off so that I can leave enough on the top and the bottom to hem those portions. And that way we can fold those ends inside each book. So there you have it. I have four hemmed edges and now I'm going to just place the book and then just again, fold those ends inside each cover. That way it'll be nice and temporary actually we're not going to hot glue it or anything because we do want to be able to cover these books for any season and then we can use the fabric too for the next two books they have no covers because i've used them to remove some pages here and there so instead of the cover i'm just going to take a few pages from each end of the book and then just fold those hems on each side just like that no one will ever know that it doesn't have a cover and then i did the same thing with the blue one And we're just about done with this project. So easy. Anyone can totally do this. There's no painting, no gluing, literally just ironing and cutting and folding. <laughs> That's it. Gorgeous.
for the next Dollar Tree hack, I'm going to take this beautiful sunflower fabric that, again, I found there at Dollar Tree. And once again, I'm just going to iron it just slightly to remove all the wrinkles. Then I'm going to take some cardboard. This little wooden flower I got at Dollar Tree, but I only have one of them. So I'm going to use it to trace it on four pieces of cardboard. So we are going to make some coasters. And the first thing I want to do is have the four pieces Mod Podge. I'm going to use the same Mod Podge I used earlier. I'm just going to add some right in the center, making sure that I'm covering enough to cover the entire flower. And I'm going to do that on all four of them. Once I have them covered with some Mod Podge, we are going to place the fabric on top of all four pieces all at once. You don't have to do this. You can just cut each one individually. I thought it would just be quicker if I just did this. So I just placed all four cardboards, placed the fabric on top, flipped it over, and I'm just going to cut it using my rotary cutter. All right, so I am going to take the wooden flower and I'm just going to trace it on the cardboard. Now that we have the fabric attached, we're just going to trace it on the back. This way we know exactly where we need to cut. Now to cut it, I started cutting it using my blade knife. This became a little hard and it was just way too long. <laughs> so then I moved on to my scissors. These scissors are older ones that I've had for a while and I don't cut any thin paper with them. But for cardboard, they are perfect. So I'm just going to cut around each flower. Nothing major. That way, it's just going to cut the cardboard as well as the fabric all at once. Once I have them cut, I am going to place more Mod Podge on top of the fabric. This is to seal everything and make them a little bit more water resistant. And I'm just going to do one thin coat on top of each. Once the Mod Podge dries, it dries completely clear. You'll never know that it's on there just like that. All right, so now we're going to hot glue some nautical rope from Dollar Tree on the edges. This is just to cover that cardboard look. And we're going to do it around and around, taking our time. It does take a little while because you have all the curves. But if you take your time, put on your favorite TV show and watch or listen to music while you do it, it does go a little quicker. But we are getting to the end here. And I'm loving the way these are turning out. They are so simple. Anyone can make. What a great craft to make with uh, a daughter or just anyone you want. It's just so much fun. I love the bright color of the sun. We're going to start with these two boards that I found at Dollar Tree. They have a beautiful design already. But I'm going to switch them up just a little bit. I'm going to give them two coats of Waverly Chalk Paint in the white. And I'm going to do the same thing on both of them. If white is not your thing, you can always use any other color. I think a beautiful teal color would be great. I'm going to take this marker. This one's from Artisa. You can use any marker you have on hand. And I'm just going to start distressing the edges. I'm just going to go just on the edges. I'm not going to mark every single space in the edges, just here and there. And then in some spots, I'm going to go a little thicker for a little bit more of a distressed look. Now that we have the boards nice and distressed, we're going to bring in the first fence. This one, again, they're all the same size and they have like four panels. I'm going to take two of each end and I'm going to first mark with a ruler so that I can cut using my shears and go as straight as possible. Don't worry if it's not straight because I'm going to show you a little trick that I found while working with these fences. They're a very soft material. So using a blade knife after you've cut them to kind of slice anything that is left sticking out works perfectly. You just have to be careful. You don't want to um, hurt yourself, of course. But if you slice going away from you, it worked really well for me. So I just took a very sharp blade knife and it sliced here and there until I found it to be as smooth as I can get it. So then once I had them where I want it, it's time to attach them to each board. I'm going to use a combination of hot glue and E6000 to make sure that I have a quick hold as well as a permanent one. These worked really well. They're very close to the same width of the boards, so it looked very natural. They do overlap just a tiny bit. And I did the same thing on the other one, so they both match. Now it's time to bring some florals. These one ones I just had on hand. They have a blue tone, but you can use any color you want. I'm going to cut the stem as much as I can and leave about one inch left because I don't want them to look too much inside the fence. So I'm just going to start threading them right from the top and I'm going to place between four and five on each one, making sure that I'm arranging as needed. You can still see a little bit of the stem. So we're going to cover that up using some ribbon. This is ticking stripe ribbon that I got from burlapfabric.com and I do have a link down below in the description box if you want to check out their products. They have amazing products. I'm going to make a very simple bow, tie it in the center with some jute string, and hot glue it 
right on the top of the fence. So that we can hang these on the wall, I am going to take some jutring. I'm just going to hot glue it as well as duct tape it to the back. This is going to give me a nice, secure, and clean look so that if I gift it to somebody, it looks nice and professional. And I love the way this turned out. I love the simplicity of them, how fresh they look, and they both will look beautiful in any spring decor. For this next Dollar Tree craft, I'm going to take this leftover home sign that I did a couple of years back and never sold. And it was just laying around in my home. So I'm just going to cover up that home portion using chalk paint. And then I'm going to take another one of those fences and I am going to remove two ends. This time I'm going to use two, maybe one and like one third or two thirds of the ones on the sides. And I'm going to cut them using my wire cutters. I think that the shears worked better than the wire cutters, but it both work. In this one, I'm using permanent glue from Dollar Tree as well as hot glue, and it worked just as well as the E6000. So I'm just gonna hot glue it right on the bottom of it. We're gonna do something a little bit similar to what we just did, but it's gonna be a little different. It's gonna give you another idea. So once I had it where I needed it, I just kept adding hot glue here and there until all the pieces were nicely attached. We're gonna bring some florals once again, these I already had on hand. We're just going to use these e eucalyptus uh, pick just to kind of guide me in where I want to drill a couple of holes because this board is real wood. I'm just going to drill them and then I'm just going to thread some jute string so that we can attach them in time on the back. Before we tighten the jute string, I am going to place all of my picks inside of it. So I'm going to take a few different flowers here. These are all from Walmart and I love the vibrant color. So I'm just going to start placing them one higher than the other and that way it's going to have a nice and height and texture once i had them where i wanted them i'm just going to fluff them as needed and then flip it over and tie it in the back nice and tight so that it does not go anywhere and then it's time to bring in one of these dragonflies they're so beautiful they have these in the spring and summertime all the time at dollar tree i'm going to cut off some of the stem using my wire cutter and then i'm going to thread it on the opposite side of the florals just for an added touch of color and a beautiful touch I'm going to thread it in there, but I'm also going to hot glue it on the back just a little bit for extra security. Instead of adding a bow on this one, I am going to add this beautiful, vibrant sunflower just to hide all that knotting and all that jute string. But look how gorgeous this looks. I love the colors. I love how vibrant it is, and it will look great in any decor. For the next Dollar Tree Spring Craft, I'm going to take this welcome wooden sign from Dollar Tree. I love that it has these little cute details of a potted plant, a little rake, as well as the boot that serves as an L. How cute is that? I'm going to give everything one pretty heavy coat of Waverly Chalk Paint in the white, and that's going to be everything, including all the little details, because then we're going to come back and touch up on all those details with some other colors. That way we have a nice white background and then add some color with that. While that dries, I'm gonna take this beautiful chalkboard. It's a first day of school chalkboard. I'm just gonna remove the jute string and we're gonna give it two coats of this bare chalk paint in the paint green. And while that dries, we're gonna bring back that welcome sign. Now we're gonna add some color. We're gonna have some fun with this. I'm gonna bring in that marker once again and I'm just going to trace all the edges again just to add dimension and a little bit of distress. But I'm not gonna do the thicker distress, just a little bit of outline. And that was perfect. And then we're gonna bring in some different colors. This is a Venetian Yellow by Rustoleum Milk Paint. I'm gonna do the little potted flower with it. And then the pot is gonna be in a nice beautiful green by Bear. And then the rake is going to go black on the bottom and light blue on top. And then the boot is going to go black and I'm going to do that with the permanent marker. It is now time to attach it to the board. We're just going to hot glue it in place towards the top of the board. On the bottom, we're gonna add some beautiful florals just to make that yellow pop. These I got at Walmart last summer season and they're gorgeous. I cut them off in little tiny branches and I'm just gonna hot glue them all along the bottom, making sure that I'm not adding as much glue because I don't wanna add ribbon or anything to this one. So I'm just gonna keep adding them until they're all covered. 
Towards the end, I did take some leafy greens that I had left over, and I'm just going to hot glue them here and there to cover where you can see some stems and then you see maybe a little bit of more glue that way it's going to look natural and not have to add anything to it i thought at first i wanted to drill a hole on the opposite end of that other hole but then i decided to do something different it's something that i did recently i'm going to take some nautical rope i'm just going to knot it in a tight knot and then i'm going to hot glue it in the front of the sign right where the holes were i want to do the same thing on the other side I'm going to cut off that excess rope real close to the knot. And then I'm just going to hot glue the remaining nautical rope to the back. This is going to make it look like it's been knotted through the hole, but it's just an illusion. <laughs> I think it turned out so beautiful. I love to know what you think of this one. It's one of my favorite from today because I love that yellow. On a recent trip to Dollar Tree, I found these heart shaped wreath forms are perfect for valentine's day but i think they're good for any other part of spring so i'm going to take one of them and i'm going to wrap it up with this beautiful burlap green ribbon from dollar tree i'm going to use the entire roll i was hoping it'd be enough to cover the entire thing but it wasn't and then i didn't have any more <laughs> and on hand at least and i didn't want to go back to dollar tree so we're just going to wrap it around as tight as i can covering the entire wreath form and then I'm going to take some neutral color burlap ribbon and I'm just going to finish off in the area where we didn't have enough. All right, so I'm going to attach, like I said, the neutral color burlap just all around that little area. Now, you're not going to be able to see it because we're going to cover it up with some florals. But I wish I would have had enough so it's just nice and even. But it's okay. It worked out in the end. So I'm just going to secure it in the back with some hot glue. And then we're going to add some florals. These are some florals that I got from my mother-in-law for Christmas. I love when she gives me some floral picks because she knows that I love to craft with them. I'm going to cut off some excess stems. And we're just going to start placing them here and there in between on that upper right corner of the heart. I'm going to clip a little hole on this one just so that I can get that stem right in there with some hot glue and it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to fluff it and bend it as needed so that it has the shape of the heart. And then I'm going to add some picks here and there, some single ones, just to kind of fill it in and on those gaps that you can see a lot of that ribbon. And then we're going to bring in some cute little pink flowers that I also got from my mother-in-law for Christmas. We're just going to start adding hot glue and placing them all in that kind of like center area, moving towards the bottom and the top, wherever it needs it. And we're just about done with this one. I gotta say, I think this one is my favorite. I love them all, but I just love the color combination. That green and that vibrant coral red is... I, I'm going to just remove the sticker, but everything else is going to remain the same. I'm going to clean them up just a little bit, although they were in really good shape. I'm going to create a little box for them to make it look like they are stacked in its original little box. So I'm going to place all three bottles right next to each other. And I'm going to take this wood plank that you can currently get at Dollar Tree for $1.25. It's in their summer section. I cut two pieces that are wide enough to cover the front and the back. I'm going to take one of those pieces and cut them directly in half. And I usually just score it with my blade knife and then snap it and sand it smooth. I am now going to take one of those halves and cut it in half. That way I have two sides for my little box. Do the same thing. I'm going to score it, snap it, and sand it smooth so that I have now four pieces. The front, the back, and two sides. With the sides, I want them to have an angled look. So I am going to cut them at an angle, making sure that the lowest it goes is the same height as the front board. I'm just going to do the same thing. Score it, snap it, and sand it. And now I'm simply just going to hot glue it together. This is not going to be a box 
that you will carry the boxes. This is just for decorative purposes. As a matter of fact, I didn't even add a bottom to the box. I just want the bottles to just sit right inside for decorative purposes. So once I had everything hot glue, I decided to distress a little bit more of all the edges. As you can see, I left some of the brown spots from the when I tore and snapped the pieces. I think it worked out really, really well. So I'm just going to distress it even more, adding a little bit more of an antique look with the antiquing wax by Waverly. I then cut out a stencil using my Cricut that says Coca-Cola. I try to mimic the font from the original logo as close as possible and I found one that really fits really well with the design. I'm going to stencil it using the same antiquing wax. This is just going to keep everything very muted because I want the Coca-Cola bottles to be the star of the piece. So I'm just going to remove the stencil and then place the bottles inside. Now you can have them where they just look like this on a shelf. I just think they look so adorable. Adorable, so vintage or you can also add flowers and make it a little bit more festive pizza pan that is from Dollar Tree I'm sure you've seen many crafts done with pizza pans but today I want to do something a little different we're gonna use two of their vinyl we're gonna use this beautiful floral one I was obsessed when I saw it through the little window and as I pulled it out, I was just in love. The colors are vibrant and the style is just stunning. So I'm going to cut a piece to cover half of the pizza pan and we're going to do the same thing with the white one. But first we're going to start removing the vinyl. My first impression was that it was actually a little thicker than what I thought it would be. So that's a good thing, right? <laughs> Throughout the video, I'm going to give you my honest opinion on not just the vinyl, but some of the supplies like this one here is one of the scrapers that you can find at Dollar Tree for $1.25. This one, I wanted to try it out. It's pretty sturdy, good quality, and I actually thought it was pretty comparable to some expensive ones. So yay on that one i'm just going to keep scraping it and applying it to one half and then i'm going to use the exacto knife to cut off the excess after i really really make sure that i just lined that corner very closely to make it easier for the exacto knife to slide through that corner and cut the excess and then we're going to repeat the process using the white vinyl on the opposite side and i just overlapped it very little in the center All right, so I'm just going to remove the excess white vinyl just like I did with the floral one. And it was actually quite easy. The vinyl cuts really well. And I think both of them have the same texture except for the white one. Maybe it's a little thicker. Maybe it was just me, but I just felt like it was just a little thicker than the floral one. I'm going to grab some of this eucalyptus picks that I get at Walmart and I'm going to cut four little branches off of it. Then I'm going to tie it in the middle and secure with some jute white string that I have on hand and secure it with hot glue and then we're going to place some hot glue towards the center at the top and that way it'll add texture and some greenery that I just love. I'm going to loop some jute string to the back of it. I'm going to hot glue it and tape it just to secure it and that way we can hang it from but I love this one. It's going to sound like a little dry erase board on one side and a magnetic maybe photo or key holder. Love it. Dollar Tree hack. I'm going to take this little wooden tray from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use one of their weeding tools and again really good quality. I'm actually very surprised, pleasantly surprised. It actually even has the little part on the inside of the end that you can actually use to remove excess vinyl. Very clever, very comparable to the expensive brands, so highly recommend this one. I'm going to remove the bottom sticker, and then we're going to paint the outside of the tray, just the sides, as well as the inside sides of the tray. I am using Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White and a smaller brush, although you can use any brush you have on hand. I am also making sure that I paint overlapping a little bit on the edge towards the center bottom of the tray. That way any edges that may be cut a little wavy 
can be covered up. I'm going to use my heat gun to speed up the drying process. And now we're going to take one of those glittery vinyl that I was just so in love with. And I'm going to measure the inside of the tray. And then I'm going to cut a piece of vinyl that fits very, very closely. It's just ever so lightly bigger than the bottom of the tray. Now, I'm sure you're noticing those wrinkles on the vinyl. That's because it's rolled up as it is stored in the box. But all I have to do is just lift up one corner and flatten it out and those wrinkles go away. So it works really, really well. My first impression with the glittery vinyl is that it's a little thinner in thickness than the white one particularly. I think it matches closer to the floral vinyl, but nonetheless, it's still pretty thick. It's not like it's going to rip unless you really pull at it. So I'm just going to apply it starting on one side, removing the backing from it very slowly, flattening it out with my fingers as well as the scraper, and then cutting the excess with the X-Acto knife. Another observation that I found was that cutting it did not cut as smooth as this smooth vinyl. This one kind of scrunched up on me. It wasn't smooth at all i am using the same exact blade as i did earlier and it's just not cutting well and you're gonna see it here right there it's just scrunching up on me i don't know maybe it was the texture of the wooden box but overall that was my first impression to finish it off i'm just going to add one of these golden toned butterflies it's a decal from dollar tree you know i love my dollar tree decals so i'm just going to place one here to the bottom right corner and i think this little tray is absolutely adorable i love that glitter vinyl yes it gave me a little hard time with cutting it but it is beautiful for the next Dollar Tree vinyl hack I'm gonna take one of these wooden rounds that I got this one on Amazon but Dollar Tree does carry them I just haven't seen them in my Dollar Tree so if you see them at your Dollar Tree make sure to grab a few I'm gonna paint using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white I'm just gonna paint half of the wooden round but vertically. So instead of the bottom half, it's gonna be like the right half. And then I'm gonna again, speed up the process of drying it using my heat gun. And then we're gonna bring in this beautiful vinyl. It's in a teal color and it has the same consistency as the white one. And I'm just gonna cover the left side of the wooden round. So I'm just gonna cut off a piece. Now this time I couldn't do it long ways because the vinyl is only 12 inches wide, but I was able to do it sideways like you know wide ways so you know what i mean and i'm just going to cover it i'm going to start placing it slowly removing the backing and smoothing it out with my hands as well as the dollar tree scraper In regards to stickiness, they actually stick pretty well. And I have an example here for you. Look at that. <laughs> this thing stuck to my paper. Now this is craft paper and normally things stick to it, but never this hard. So the vinyl sticks really well in my opinion. And all the surfaces that I've stuck them on so far, it really sticks really well. So yay on that also. So I'm gonna use the X-Acto knife to cut off the excess vinyl. And you see there the edges when you cut it, it doesn't cut off really, really close as you want. So I tried my little technique of using my sanding block to remove the excess edge vinyl and it worked really really well I did the same technique recently with the peel and stick wallpaper from Dollar Tree and it works just as well with vinyl I'm gonna sand smooth the white side just to make sure that it's smooth and then wipe it really really well I am now going to take this decal that says find beauty in the rain. I just thought the colors really matched the nice teal color so I'm gonna start cutting words and phrases and pieces off of it so that I can then dry fit them on the side that it's white the best that I can because it wasn't thick enough to cover the entire white part. So I'm gonna do my very best. I'm gonna start removing it from the backing. I'm gonna remove the backing and work my way up from the bottom. And I do have some excess raindrops that I have left over. So once I'm done applying the words, I'm gonna start cutting those in pieces so that I can fill in a little bit of the white spaces that I have left over. Thank you. 
And then once I had everything applied, I am going to flip it over and just cut off some of the excess decal that is overflowing from the edge and sand down those edges so that they are smooth to the edge. Then I'm going to seal everything using a Minwax Polycrylic in the semi-gloss for two things. One, I want the decal to stick really well, although they stick for me really, really well. But this is because the decal has a shiny finish and the paint had a matte finish. You really could see that decal a lot. I didn't like that. So I applied one coat of the Minwax Polycrylic in the semi-gloss and that added a little bit of gloss which made everything blend a little better. I added some greenery to the left side where the vinyl is in this leftover arrangement that I had from a previous DIY. I just hot glued it to the center and I think this is stunning. I love the way it turned out. I love that vinyl color. I think it's beautiful. vinyl hack i'm gonna take this little round rising tray i got it at target dollar spot as well as this one that i did with peel and stick vinyl a few weeks back this time we're going to give it a whole different look i love that it has these little folding legs that you can create levels of trays whether it's for decorative purposes or serving food i'm going to give the top two coats of rustoleum chalked paint in the linen white Once the paint was completely dry, I am going to start using the black vinyl. This one is as thick as the white one is, and I think the white and the black are actually the thickest, but by very small amounts. I'm going to cut off a piece, it's maybe about 8 inches wide, and then I'm going to start rounding off and cutting off some pieces because we're going to give this little tray a cow finish. I thought it would be really clever to give it a really cow unique look, so I'm just going to wiggle, wiggle around and cut some shapes that I would think cows would have on their fur and then we are going to start applying them to the tray. There's no right or wrong way to apply these really. I was just following my instincts to see where it looks better and as a matter of fact I didn't even use all of my shapes but I did use four of them. And once again, I am going to cut off the excess vinyl from the sides and then I am going to sand them off to make sure that they are smooth to the edges. I did not seal this one, although I think I will because if you spill something, you want to make sure it's protected. But I think it's so adorable. It's definitely one of my favorites from today. I love that it's so unique and I just love how cute it turned out. we're going to start with this one is this garden one i just love the design i'm going to cut off the garden portion i'm just going to save it for another project but right now we're just going to work with the little potted greenery plants i'm going to trim off some of the edges because we are creating a nice large banner for our fireplace so i'm just going to cut in a v shape on the bottom but keep it kind of square on top and i'm going to do the same thing with the other two using the first one as a guide Now I'm going to take this burlap ribbon that I got at Dollar General about a year ago, I'd say, and I'm going to just cut pieces that are long enough to cover each design. I'm going to then cut two more so that I have three pieces. I am then going to spray some of these adhesive spray on the back of each design and apply them to the top of each burlap ribbon. Using my rotary cutter again and my square ruler, I'm just going to cut off the excess, leaving about a half inch of the burlap ribbon around every edge. I'm going to take two pieces of this shiplap craft paper and I am going to adhesive each design onto it. Again, I am going to leave enough room on the edges because we are going to then use the rotary cutter once again to cut off the excess, leaving about another half inch 
of design around the burlap ribbon. Here are the three designs and the three flags. I just love the way they look. This ribbon is from Dollar Tree. It's the lacy kind. You know, you've probably seen it. It's beautiful. I always grab a couple when I'm there because it's just such a beautiful style. I folded it in half and I'm just going to place it right down the half. You see that line there? That'll be my mark to know where the half point of the ribbon is. I'm going to add some hot glue about an inch down the top part and that's where I'm going to hot glue the ribbon on the back of each flag and I'm going to leave about, uh, about three and a half inches in between each flag and repeat the process with hot glue. I am then going to take some greenery. This is some eucalyptus picks that I already had on hand and I'm going to start applying them in between each flag as well as the front and the back of the banner. And we are just about done with this one. It's definitely one of my favorites. I love the way it turned out. It has such a farmhouse, fresh garden feel to it. This is what it looks like on my fireplace. This just shows you how large this banner is. I absolutely love the way it turned out. we are using for this one is this beautiful thankful grateful blessed sign i love it it has more of a fall style but i think it's going to look great with this decorative cutting board from the target dollar spot it was five dollars i'm just going to place it on top and then i'm just going to mark kind of like with my fingers and my hands where the edge is and then i'm just going to start ripping the edges i love using this technique every so often because it just adds so much character and it also doesn't have that straight cut look it just gives you a lot more grace and i just think it just adds some really cool touch so i'm just going to rip it all the way around Once I have it where I want it, then I'm just going to add some Mod Podge. This is a dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I've never used it in a dishwasher. I don't know if it really works. This is just what I had on hand. So I'm just going to apply one pretty heavy coat and then apply the design right on top. I am going to press it down with my hands as well as a roller to make sure that I don't have as many bubbles as possible. I'm going to let it fully dry and then I'm going to add one more coat of the Mod Podge right on top and I'm going to do all the edges and everything to seal everything in place. And then once that second coat of Mod Podge dried, it's time to add some embellishments. This burlap ribbon I got from burlapfabric.com. I am going to just loop it and then scrunch it in the middle, tie it with some jute string. We're going to make a very simple bowl. This is the first thing we're going to add. And then we're going to tie it to the neck of the cutting board. This is just going to give me something to then add more greenery and flowers to. I'm going to start adding some of these eucalyptus picks that I already had on hand from another project left over. I'm going to hot glue two of them one to each side and we're going to hot glue it to the bottom of the bow this is just going to add greenery and then it's just going to bring together the whole design because i love the colors of the design so i really love the way they look then i'm going to start adding some of these fall flowers this is from this year's dollar tree fall section they're starting to put them on my dollar tree and i love what i see i'm going to grab also these little balls they're also from the fall floral section at dollar tree i'm going to cut off first the greenery and then I'm going to cut off one of the little balls and then just start hot gluing it to the center of the arrangement and that's it for this one I love this one I love fall and I know it's not fall quite yet but I hope it gives you an inspiration how other way you can use these calendar designs So these smaller ones is the one that I'm going to use for the next DIY. So we're going to take four of these wood slices that I do get on Amazon and I do have on my Amazon store. So make sure you check them out. They, again, it is linked below. Four of them is what I'm going to use because we're going to use them as ghosters. I'm going to start ripping several designs from the sunsets that I just absolutely loved, although it was really hard to choose my favorites. 
Once I had them, I'm going to place them on top of each wood slice. And again, I'm just going to start pressing down with my hands and fingers. And then I'm going to start cutting ever so slightly inside of the line. So I want to be able to see that bark around each coaster. All right, so now that we have all the designs cut to fit each round, I am going to place a Mod Podge once again and place a design, press it down, roll it, making sure I don't have many bubbles. That being said, I did get some wrinkles on this one. I didn't get it so much on the cutting board, but I did get it on this one. It's not horrible, but I just don't like getting wrinkles. And no matter what I try, this time I actually applied the Mod Podge first, applied the design, let it dry, then apply the top coat and it still gave me bubbles. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. What am I doing that is giving me all these wrinkles and bubbles? All right, moving on. So this is the second coat. That first coat's already dry. I'm just going to add a one coat on top of all of them to seal everything. And of course, these are going to be coasters. So I want them to be water resistant. And that's it. A beautiful way to use these wood rounds and a gorgeous way to use these designs of this calendar i love the way they turned out they make a great gift as well love them so you see the smaller designs on the back we're not going to use those smaller ones but we're going to use this other size up that is right here in each corner i thought it was the perfect size for what i want to do next so i'm just going to cut them off to as far close as i can and i'm going to do the same thing with the other one on the other side these wood rounds the age is from the target dollar spot and the little wooden flower is from dollar tree you can find these wood blanks all the time at dollar tree so i think this would be really cute if i had all flower ones and use them as coasters as well don't you think it would be beautiful anyways i'm going to paint the flower with one pretty heavy coat of rustoleum chalk twin in the linen white and then let it fully dry. Then for the other one, I'm gonna use the mint, the cream of bare chalk man because it matches very closely the color of the design. So I'm just gonna give it one pretty heavy coat once again, and then let that one fully dry. Once it was dry, it's time to start applying the design. So this one is such a cute little design. I'm going to, instead of Mod Podging it, I'm gonna use the adhesive spray, place it right on top, and then we're gonna cut off the excess of the design and then sand down the edges to make sure that all those edges are nicely smooth and transition onto the wood very nicely. And of course, I repeated the process on the second one that says, be kind. Such a beautiful, cute little design. These would be great as an addition to a tear tray or just to add just a, the little touches to add to your decor already. I think they turn out so cute. I love that we use the back part of the calendars and imagine there are 12 others little small ones that you can use as well. that we're using on this one is a coffee themed i love this one and i love that it has that black and white that i love i'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut off some of the x's on the edges this way we have a more trimmed look of it this first day of school board they are in the back to school section at dollar tree i grabbed a few and i'm going to use this one and i'm going to remove the jute string and give it two coats of the amy howard at home chalk paint in the black tone Once the paint was dry, I'm going to add some adhesive spray to the back of the design and we're going to apply it right to the center of the board. We're going to place it a little bit towards the bottom because we are going to be adding some greenery to the top. This boxwood I get on Amazon. I do have it on my Amazon store. I'm going to grab four little branches and then we're just going to tie them together in the center using some jute string and securing in place with some hot glue. Once I have it all secure, we're just gonna attach it to the board with some hot glue. 
replace the jute string place it right back where it was and that's it for this one such a simple so easy anyone can do it you can do any of these they are simple they are easy and quick and i love the way they turned out Dollar Tree hack. We're going to start with this wooden round. Now, Dollar Tree carries wooden rounds. They're a little thinner than this one. This one I just had on hand is from the Target Dollar Spot, and it was three dollars. I thought it was a pretty good deal. It is two sided. One side is a chalkboard. The other side is more of a wood tone. But we are going to give the wood side two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk bin in the linen white. Today's video, I'm going to show you different ways that you can use Dollar Tree tiles these are the ones that are like peel and stick and they have a tile more of a look to them and for this project we are going to start with this beautiful butterfly design one it has a metallic finish to them which most of them do i am going to remove the backing from it just like a sticker and place it right in the center this wood round is going to be such a beautiful vibrant summer like wood round i think anyone would love i'm going to take some of this boxwood and i'm just going to cut a few pieces from it as well as these purple flowers from dollar tree i'm going to tie them in the center like a little swag for the wood round and then we're going to do that using some jute string from amazon I thought about hot gluing it, although I could, I decided to staple it because I wanted a little bit more of a strong hold. I'm going to arrange the flowers so that they are facing the way I want them to. Then I'm going to take one of these leftover sunflowers from a pick that I had. I believe it was from Walmart. I'm going to cut off the stem really close to the base of the flower, add some hot glue, and hot glue it to the center. This flower really popped that yellow tone in the butterfly very nicely. I'm going to use some of that white jute string and i'm just going to thread it through the holes that were already on the board i'm going to tie it in a knot and then we're going to have something to hang it from and this one turned out stunning what an easy way to create a beautiful wood round no cutting machine needed these tiles are just so versatile love them Tree hack. I'm going to show you the difference between two types of tiles that Dollar Tree carries. They have a smaller one and a larger one. Today we're going to be working mostly with the smaller ones, but I wanted to give that larger one a try. The larger one has a little bit more of a plastic feel, where the smaller ones have a little bit more of a paper feel. This one I thought it would work for the next project. It did not, but I want to show you why. So once I have everything open and took everything out from the packaging, I'm going to take one of these wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree. The crafting sections have many wood blanks, and this heart is one of them. I'm going to remove the plastic backing from the tile, place the heart on top, and then cut the excess. Once I started cutting the excess, I realized that this tile has two separate pieces of paper or plastic, one with the sticky side and one with the design. Once I cut the edges, it was no longer sticking with the design. It was just the sticky part covering it. So I removed it and then went on with to work with the smaller one. I placed one of these beautiful bronze ones right in the center of the heart and cut off the excess. At first, I thought I was just going to leave the design right in the center of the heart and leave those corners bare. So I went on to sanding down the edges. I have found that sanding down the edges using wall decals, using these tiles, or even the peel and stick wallpaper works really well to smooth down those edges i changed my mind and then i took off the leftover cutouts to cover additional spots in the heart now i thought i would then leave it just like this leaving a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom of the heart bare and i went on to painting i think you know where i'm going with this right <laughs> so i after i applied the first coat of paint i thought oh yeah it'll work out I just did not like it. I just felt like it needed to have those spots covered. So I took the second tile that I had with the same design and I cut off a piece of it. And I'll show you here in a minute. I'm going to take the board that I'm actually going to be working with. This is another one from Target Dollar Spot. It was $5. Such a great size board. The sawtooth hooks were on one side because it was a vertical board, but we're going to turn it into a horizontal board. So I'm going to move them to the one side and use the same little screws to secure them in place. 
using my Cricut, I cut out a scriptures from Proverbs because I thought it was very appropriate for the sign. If you do not have a Cricut, you can always use decals that you can find at the Dollar Tree or you can even add a flower arrangement next to the heart. You'll see what I'm talking about and I think that will look very pretty. In this case, I do want to sell this board and I wanted to have a nice scripture message. After I weeded the design and added some transfer tape, I'm going to place it towards the right side of the board. The black and the white just look so good together. So here's the part where I just decided to take one of those tiles, cut up a piece, and then add it to those little bare edges. And it looked so much better. I just felt like it wasn't, it didn't look as finished as I wanted to. So it was worth the work. <laughs> All right, moving along. I did give two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Tint to the heart and it's drying. I'm going to cut up four pieces of this foam core from Dollar Tree and I'm going to hot glue them to the back of the heart. Two and two. So I want the heart to be hot glued to the left side of the board, but I want it to have a little bit more of a 3D look and have a little bit of space behind the heart. And that's exactly what I did. And it worked out so well. And because it's so light, hot glue is plenty sufficient. I'm going to add another little swag for this one using the same boxwood picks. And then I'm just going to tie it in the center, just like I did the other one with the same white jute string. For this one, I decided to do both hot glue and staples to secure it in place. I do want to make a note that the design on the heart, it's hard to see because of the color, but it is there, it is textured, and it is beautiful. Now I'm going to take one of these magnolia flowers that I got at Walmart, cut off the stem really close to the base, hot glue it to the center, and I think this one is stunning. It's definitely one of my favorites. I love the black and white look. It is so timeless. And of course, I love the scripture, so it is just perfect. For the next Dollar Tree hack, I'm going to take this leftover Easter sign from the Easter season, remove the jute string, and I'm going to sand down all of the glitter from on top. I'm going to use my palm sander, but you can definitely use a sanding block if you do not have an electric sander, although the electric sander is really effective and very fast. Once I had all the glitter removed, I'm just going to wipe it down really, really well, making sure there's no dust. Now I'm going to use my blade knife and I'm going to use also my square ruler to cut off a piece of the sign. It's about three and a half inches wide and I'm going to score it several times. You've probably seen me use this technique several times before. I score it, snap it, and then sand it smooth. This works really well for these type of boards that you can find at the Dollar Tree. Once I had this one cut out, I'm going to cut it directly in half and it's going to be a three and a half by three and a half square. What we're making today is some coasters. So once I had it again, I cut it, score it, snapped it and sanded it. <laughs> and I'm going to do the same thing for two more. All right, now that we have four of them nicely sanded, I'm going to take the tile. This one is a beautiful golden tone one, and I'm going to place each square on each corner. Not necessarily need to be in each corner. This is just how I decided to place them. But then I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife and remove the excess tile. Are just basically done we're going to finish cutting off the excess tile and then of course we're going to sand them down to make sure those edges are nice and smooth and i think these little coasters are so stinking beautiful you can use any tile for these coasters i just happened to grab this one i love the design you can make as many as you want beautiful hack i'm gonna take one of these little wooden crates from dollar tree you know what i'm talking about they're everywhere at dollar tree they have different styles i got this one and i'm gonna paint the sides and the bottom of the box using rustoleum chalk paint in the linen white as a matter of fact i just told you about my amazon store these brushes are amazing such good quality and i get them on amazon and they are in my amazon store all right, here's the tile that we're going to use for this one. It's this beautiful metallic silver one. I'm going to cut it in half and then place it covering each long side of the little box. And then, of course, using the X-Acto knife, we are going to cut off the excess tile. Okay. 
and we're going to repeat the process on the other side as well. Because this is a little wooden crate, I still wanted to have that crate look. So I grabbed one of my screwdrivers and my square ruler, and I am just going to dent those lines using the screwdriver. This is going to give it that little crate look that it originally had, but with the design on the sides, which I think is so beautiful. So now moving on to the sanding, of course, we got to sand the edges down, making sure that they are nice and smooth and transition really easily onto the wood. I'm going to add some floral foam from the Dollar Tree. It fit perfectly right in there. I'm just going to place it down and then I'm going to cover the foam using some Spanish moss that I already had on hand from Dollar Tree. These little boxwood picks are left over from another project. I never throw them away. Sometimes I even pull them away from other arrangements because you never know when you're going to need them. You'd be surprised how many times I use my florals leftovers in other projects and it works perfectly. So I'm just gonna place all of them all around the little box and then I'm gonna take these little white and yellow flowers from Dollar Tree that again, I had left over. They were already cut at this size, which worked perfectly. And I'm just gonna start placing them all over the little crate. And this little arrangement turned out stunning. I love it. I love that I made those lines with the screwdriver, the design, the silver tone is just so beautiful. For 99 cents, I thought it was such a great deal. I actually found two, but we're going to be working with one of them right now. I am going to paint the edges and a little bit of the inside edges with Rust-Oleum Chalk Bin and the Linen White. And I'm going to give it two coats. I'm not going to take this tile. This one has a little bit more of a traditional tile look going to remove the back from it and I'm just going to place it right in the center of the board. It so happened that it fit perfectly inside except for the edges. The corners I had to trim a little but not too much at all and I just used my exacto knife to cut them. And we're just about done. I love the way this one turned out. I did this one a couple of videos back but I wanted to include it because I just think it's beautiful. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to start with this gift bag. Dollar Tree has such a selection of gift bags. I love them. They're actually really good quality, beautiful designs, various sizes, and the selection is just so beautiful. I'm going to cut up the gift bag in multiple pieces just to remove all the edges. And then I'm going to take some of these wooden flower blanks from their crafting section. They have such a selection of these as well. I'm going to take them and start tracing them on a specific area where I just thought the design match what I was looking for and then I'm just going to simply cut it use it with my scissors and I'm going to do the same thing with the other flower and the other side of the gift bag. I am then going to spray each flower using Elmer's Adhesive Spray from Dollar Tree and then once I have them sprayed I'm just going to place the flowers on top. And once I had the flowers nicely covered, I am going to sand down the edges. This will cause those edges to be nice and soft, smooth and flush to the wood. It works like magic. I'm simply using a sanding block from Dollar Tree. Now I have my two flowers done. I'm going to take a third one and I'm going to use one of these Dollar Tree vinyls. If you have not used Dollar Tree vinyls, I'm actually quite impressed with them. I've done several crafts. I just posted a video using vinyl from Dollar Tree and how you can use them and I'll have it linked down below. I'm going to cut off the excess vinyl from the flower and again I'm just going to sand down those edges for a smooth finish. Once that's done, it's time to attach the flowers to each other. I'm going to drill holes on the bottom of the top one, then on the top and bottom of the green middle one, and then on the top of the bottom one. This is so that we can join them together using some white jute string.
Once I had all three flowers joined together, I'm going to take a painter six. I'm just going to add hot glue to the back and place it on the back. This is just going to add some security. At first, I was just going to add this one, but then I changed my mind, ripped it off, and I'm going to add two of them. So I'm just going to add the one on one side and then a second one to the bottom of that one. This is going to be even more secure, and it worked well. I'm going to take some eucalyptus picks, and I'm going to cut off some branches off of them. And I'm just going to start hot gluing them in between each flower. I'm now going to take these beautiful coral red flowers from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use every single part of this pick. I'm going to take apart the flowers and I'm just going to hot glue three to that one right there and then the remaining I'm going to hot glue in the other arrangement. I am then going to take the green leaves from the flower pick and I'm going to cut off a piece from the bottom add hot glue and then I'm just going to place it towards the bottom of the flower arrangement. I'm going to do the same thing with the second leaf but I'm just going to place it on the opposite side facing the opposite side so that it balances each other and I think it turned out absolutely stunning. I love this arrangement. These colors are vibrant and this is such a large piece. Love it. DIY I am going to take this beautiful gift bag the print on this one is beautiful I love it these colors are so sharp and the design is just so pretty I'm going to do the same thing and cut off one side of the gift bag I'm going to take this picture frame and these are beautiful I love the white and the gold trim they are 8 by 10 and I'm telling you for $1.25 this is a really good find it is so so pretty I'm gonna remove everything from it but I'm gonna keep the glass and I'm gonna place it right on top of the gift bag and I'm gonna trace two of them and then cut it using my scissors Now it's time to easily put on the glass and then place each paper of the gift bag right on it. That's it. I contemplated using some greenery, some flowers, and making it very pretty towards like one corner, but I decided to just leave it as is because I just think it's so beautiful with that picture frame, but it's certainly something that you can do. You can permanently add some like greenery or flowers, and I think it would look beautiful, but it's so pretty just like this. Dollar Tree DIY. I'm going to take this Seize the Day Summer Sign by Dollar Tree and I'm just going to sand off all the glitter and just kind of roughen up the surface so that the paint really has something to adhere to. I'm going to wipe it really, really well and then I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White. I am using one of my favorite brushes that I do get on Amazon. This is the gift bag we are going to be using for this DIY and it is stunning. It is large. It is a bride and groom design and I'm just going to cut one side and then poke a hole right in the center. We're going to roughly remove that bride and groom portion. It is rough. We're not being very careful. Now I'm going to take my exacto knife and i'm going to really then cut off a lot of that excess white is it perfect no it's okay you won't even tell because the surface is going to be white behind it but i am going to cut as close as possible to the edges I am then going to flip it over and I'm going to again spray it with the Elmer's adhesive spray and then once it's sprayed I'm going to place it right on top. Now make sure it's even as possible on all edges. If it's not don't stress about it. It happened to me. I'll show you how I fix it. So I'm going to use my exacto knife to cut off the excess gift bag from the sides and yes you guessed it. We are going to sand it down again to make sure that these edges are smooth and flush 
to the wood. It's such a unique trick. I love using it. All right, so now do you see where the flower around the circle, there's thinner on one side and the other. So I put the thinner part towards the top because we're gonna cover it up with some greenery. This galvanized plaque is also from Dollar Tree. I removed everything from it and hot glued it to the center. Be very careful because the metal gets really hot with the hot glue. This leafy greenery I had left over from a pick. I'm just gonna remove them from them and then we're just gonna hot glue it to the top and then we're gonna take some purple flowers from Dollar Tree that I think are so pretty and I'm gonna put one to each side by simply hot gluing them to the center. I'm then gonna take these roses. These are very pale pink. Just gonna take one of them, remove the bottom pick and hot glue it to the center. And it looks so pretty. I think it looks perfect with the design on the round. I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree decal and I'm gonna cut up the bottom portion that says our story, our home, our love. And I'm just gonna place them right on top of each other. I was going to leave it as is, but I ended up changing my mind. Now you can certainly use it and leave it as is. I think it's very pretty, but I ended up removing it because I just feel like you were able to see that vinyl clear portion through the galvanized tin way too much. So I used my Cricut and designed a decal. I'm just going to apply it on the center. I know not everybody has a Cricut, so that's why I wanted to first have the option of using a Dollar Tree decal. It just did not look quite right. I think the white looks so much better on that galvanized tin plaque. To finish it off, I'm just going to add a little bit of jute string to the back, hot glue it and tape it just to make sure it's not going to fall. And that's it. What a beautiful wood round. I have never used this design and using a gift bag. I love the simplicity of it. Next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this hexagon mirror. I know you have seen them. They have quite a selection of decorative mirrors. This one is really beautiful and the black is very nice, but I do want to spray paint it with this Rustoleum hammered silver spray paint. I'm just going to give it a couple of coats. Once dry, I'm going to take it back inside and then it's time to start taking the gift bag. Look at how beautiful this is. This is one of the smaller ones, but it's stunning. I removed one side of it and I'm going to spray it with the El Elmer's adhesive spray and then place it right on top. I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to cut off the excess using my X-Acto knife. Once I had it cut, I'm just gonna place it right where it goes. I'm gonna use the backing and place it right behind it. I didn't have to sand this one down because one, it's a mirror, so you don't wanna do that. And two, you're not gonna see it. I'm just gonna place it back where it was and then make sure the clips are where they need to go. I'm gonna take these leftover beads from another project and I'm just gonna hot glue them to each corner. Simply hot glue, it worked really well. This one you can use as a picture wall decor. Certainly can use that. It has a little clip that you can do that. Or I added these little legs to use as a decorative tray. I think it's stunning, beautiful. I love that I spray painted the frame, beautiful. So I know there's tons of inspiration here for you, but you're gonna have to let me know which one is your favorite or which one stood out to you the most. I have another video here with tons of Dollar Tree crafts check it out, click on it. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.